Hey folks, Matt here. Uh, it was the day after I got back from my um, Wilderness Reserve trip. Uh, beautiful day, just sitting here on the deck. Me is just off camera there, chilling out in the sun. Um, it's Friday, Stephanie's at work. Um, I figure I'd come out and do a uh, gear dump video. Um, as a rule, after every trip, the first thing I do when I get home is unpack everything. Uh, hang it up, dry everything out, clean everything off. Um, but it was 11 o'clock last night by the time I got home. Um, after getting everything coordinated, getting picked up, getting the bike to eat and whatnot. So, uh, plus I knew everything was put away dry and clean. Uh, so I wasn't worried about it. Uh, you definitely know, even for one night, I don't like leaving anything wet rolled up. I'm after being asked a lot of uh, a lot of questions uh, from a lot of different people about specific types of gear. Uh, you know what you bring. Uh, every trip is different, so you know what I brought on this trip was not necessarily what I'd bring on a on a day trip. When you go, uh, you know you're going anywhere potentially up to five days, uh, having to carry everything on your back, not knowing what the portages are going to be like, not knowing what the water levels are going to be like. You need to be a little bit more selective, um, but at the same time. Uh, it's still early in the year, so I knew I'd be dealing with cold weather. So that you know that involves extra sleep gear, uh, a larger sleeping bag. Um, I had the dog, so I had to have you know extra stuff in the first aid kit, um, all her food, uh, blanket and stuff for her. So uh, plus camera gear, uh, GoPros and tripods and batteries and battery packs and all that stuff. So. Uh, it adds up to you know an extra bit of gear uh, plus my boat being 70 pounds there's no way I'm getting away with a single carry so if I have to do a double carry I'm alright with two heavy bags that I can carry in the first load and a, a light bag that I can carry with with my canoe uh, so this will have my rain gear first aid kit um, stuff that if you know I might need to get to really quick so right on the top uh, first aid kit. This is most of my first aid kit. Uh, it's a smaller version that I'll take on day trips or quick overnights. Uh, just keep it in an old um, peanut butter jar, keep everything dry. That's where I'll keep my headlamp, whatever medication I'm taking, the, the medication that me is taking. Next is rain gear. Uh, this is my pouch with uh, Spear GoPro, uh, some extra batteries. Uh, attachments. Uh, this is a great example of how you don't need to spend a lot of money to get gear that works. Um, this is actually a bicycle seat pouch, mounts to the back of a bicycle seat to post. Got it at the dollar store for like three bucks. Uh, and I keep my water filter in it. You don't want to puncture this water filter uh, or it just won't work. Um, so I, I keep it in here, uh, this has three different attachment points on it, so you can attach to the seat and the, the bit of rope that I got run up, run up under the uh, gunnel. Perfect, three bucks, good to go. Uh, another example is uh, my little tech pouch. I bought it at dollar store, four bucks, flip that open. And uh, my uh, battery pack sits perfect in the front. I cut this little notch out of the flap and uh, cord fits in so that way then I can have it charged and still have it insecure. A little carabiner to keep it attached to the bottom of the tripod, have that run up to charge everything. Um, in the back then extra cables, extra small tripods. Four bucks, can't go wrong. So that's pretty much it for, for this bag. And other than that, uh, when I'm portaging, I'll attach the tripod to the side of this. Uh, with the tripod on, it's about 15 pounds. So it's definitely manageable with the canoe. Now, my pockets and my belt. Um, as you've seen in all of my videos, I have this attached to my belt loop and in my pocket all the time. Uh, my belt knife. I also have my beer spray on this trip. Uh, as I've covered in a few videos, side cutters. Uh, adds of snares being in further in the reserve is pretty slim, but when you get out around the cabin areas uh, Some of the boys will set snares around her cabin. So just just in case now she did have her light and her bell on her, too. So 
uh, multi-tool, knife, scissors, pliers, file, whatever. Uh, lighter, chapstick, and my beer banger pen launcher. You just uh, take your beer banger, screw it onto the top, pull that back, bingo. I also have flares and I have whistles. If I had to have called, I had to call out SOS uh, to get someone to come. Uh, if it was foggy and a flare is no good, you got your whistle. They can hear roughly your location. Uh, and if it is clear enough, you throw up your flare. They'll know, you know, where you're to. Um, and in that same spirit, uh, speaking of SOS, uh, my Garmin InReach Mini. So Stephanie was able to track where I was to. Uh, and I could also keep track myself. Uh, I estimated this trip to be roughly 50 kilometers. Um, I knew as the crow flies it was about 40 so I said with the twists and turns it should be roughly 50. Uh, turned out to be 51 kilometers uh, start to finish. Uh, this stayed attached to me the entire time. Uh, the only time it wasn't attached to me was when I was in the tent. Um, if I was in the boat a lot of times I'd have it attached to the PFD. The second I took, actually before I'd even take the PFD off I'd unclip this and clip it to my belt loop. Uh, and it stayed on there until I got in the tent and got changed three days tracking my progress the whole time I only went through half half a, a battery still on 50 percent and I was able to track the route uh, that included all my double carry portages as well so 51 kilometers so it was a decent three days my canoe seat to, uh, to many it's a luxury item uh, it's not the lightest thing in the world it is a few pounds um, but for the amount of relief and comfort that I get from it, it's a no-brainer for me. It's well worth carrying. Uh, it's got a, a little uh, net on the back. I usually keep my glasses, paddle gloves and stuff there. And I, I threw an extra elastic cargo net uh, with a few things in it like Mia's leash. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll keep a fleece or a buff or an extra pair of gloves or something back there. Uh, that's my, uh, my cat hole kit. Uh, paddles, I've got my uh, bending branches, uh, Sunburst XL uh, 14 degree bent paddle, uh, carbon fiber shaft. Uh, and as a backup, and turned out to be my primary for most of it, uh, just a, my one of my kayak paddles. I really enjoy the single paddle, but when, you, you're, when your goal is to cover distance, break out the double blade, you're good to go. For footwear. My Sims G3 guide boots. I knew I was going to be wet at least up to my knees for most of the rivers. Uh, and I didn't want to have to wear a pair of boots that are normally supposed to be kept dry because they're just going to be heavy and uncomfortable. Um, but the Sims boots are they're a wading boot, so they're meant to be uh, they're meant to be wet. So I wore those and Sims wading socks, the thick neoprene wading socks. They'll keep your feet dry until you go over them naturally. Uh, so my feet were wet the whole time, but I had a pair of wool socks and neoprene is going to keep you warm. So even when it got cold, my feet, uh, they were wet, but they were still warm. My little tripod stool. I didn't want the, the weight and bulk of my chair um, on this trip. My barrel, 30 liter barrel what I keep all my food in and whatever other gear fits after my food. So me is food bag. This little pouch here I keep my cutlery and all my uh, snacks. Right, so whatever bars, you know, a little cutting board, coffees, French vanillas, whatever else is there, hot chocolate. And Again, another item I got from the dollar store for like three or four bucks. Uh, I think I've covered this in one of my other videos as well. Uh, my cook kit. This is my stainless steel pot. Um, and my fuel canister. My pot scrubby and my pot scraper. My Tokes 750ml. And my Soto Windmaster. And my MSR bowl, deep dish bowl. Fantastic. I had to give up on the silicone. Um, everything that I tried didn't work. I can taste silicone up everything. Uh, and the rest is just food. It's still full of all the dehydrated stuff that I had vacuum sealed and brought with me. So I'll just take that, throw all that back in storage and it's good to go for the next trip.
And below that is uh, Mia's food. She didn't eat most of her food. Uh, I brought seven days worth of food for her too. Uh, I can make do being hungry. I, I didn't want her to get hungry, so. Uh, my silky saw. I didn't have a fire. I didn't want to bring an axe or a hatchet just for the weight in the bulk. Uh, I knew between uh, silky saw and my knife I could baton a few things with this and this is going to cut everything I'd need for a fire. I didn't have a fire but I did use this when I got to that lodge. Uh, the boys had some wind damage. Uh, there was a few trees come down on top of the cabin on top of their shed. Um, there was some larger diameter st there was stuff there the size of the barrel. I couldn't cut through that but I did cut down and haul away whatever whatever I could manage with this. So. In the spirit of leave no trace, you know, you, you leave it the way you found it. But when you come across something that someone else owns, you try and leave it better than you found it. You know, you get in there, especially if it's something that you're using, tidy it up a little bit, you know, clean up around the yard, whatever. And look at this, I'm able to bring all my garbage out. Who would have thought? Uh, some people. You're in the middle of nowhere and you're finding uh, Vienna sausage tins. So that's all my garbage. And the Polly's born that I told Stephanie I lost. We knew it had to be in something. I didn't think I would have thrown it in the garbage. But anyways, that's good. Beer spray. Kept it on me through most of the trip until I got down around Salmon Waters. And two extra bowl in the bag dinners. Um, just as a backup. And my canoe bag. I've been shitting on this bag since I bought it. I don't like it. Um, but it's hard to complain at this point because it has been through quite a bit and with the exception of one small hole in the bottom which was likely my fault uh, it's holding up pretty good so far not good uh, but it is just a cheap bag you can't put any heavy weight in it i don't trust the straps on it right there's no there's no frame thin webbing strap uh, it's just not a very good quality bag but it, it'll get you by on on short trips all the good large canoe bags that haven't gone up to four hundred dollars in price in the last two years or have been out of stock for the last two years it's i can't find any of the bags that i want to buy uh, me is fleece very important i had to keep her warm dry bag with my clothing in it my thermarest compressible pillow i believe this is the large size I find the pillow to be what determines most of my comfort when I'm trying to sleep. Uh, so for me, it's, it's worth having a larger, larger pillow. Mia's blanket or her bed, rough wear bed. Not that she relies on it. My uh, Sea to Summit Thermalite Reactor bag liner. Uh, this is after saving me a couple of times. Uh, I was freezing cold on the first night, and I got into this. I was still kind of cold, but. It made a big difference. It actually it, it helped me fall asleep, so it made that much of a difference, anyways. My hammock that I brought never did use. Uh, weighs about a pound, so it's not you know not huge. Uh, it doesn't take up much space. I brought it to use it as a chair, as a place to lay back and relax without having to get in the bed. Because uh, the stool, there's no way to rest your back on the stool. My climate uh, insulated double V sleep pad this isn't how it's supposed to pack away it's I, I rolled it up a lot longer than it's supposed to be but the way i had this bag packed it fits better like that my tent msr mother hubba uh, exceptional quality tent i mean it msr speaks for itself um lightweight but it's big uh, it's a lot bigger than what i need um, but my only two-man tent is a four season that weighs nine pounds it's an older four season it weighs nine pounds uh, now in the meantime if anybody's looking for a, a excellent quality four season two-man tent and they got a lightweight three season two-man tent i mean i'm definitely interested in a trade uh, so shoot me a message i'll go from there um, wicked tent i'm out sleeping a few times i do like it but uh, it's just it's too heavy for a, a canoe trip but I do want a smaller footprint in the tent for these type of trips. It would be a lot easier to find a place to set it up. Three man takes a lot of, takes up a lot of space. Uh, my tarp. I always bring my tarp on these trips. Uh, it's a good emergency shelter should, should something happen to the tent. Uh, it's a good windbreak, good rain, uh, rain shelter. 
Uh, if, I had, if I was stuck somewhere for a day and it was raining, I could have set this up and hung out under it. It's a microfiber towel. It's a large size towel. Uh, you can see it packs away. It's small. It's, it's lightweight. But it does open up pretty big. So After that is my monstrosity of a sleeping bag. Um, I know I covered in the past. It's the uh, North Face Dolomite One Duo. It's a modular system, three in one. So you got two top layers and your bottom layer. Uh, the two top layers are have different ratings. So when you combine the two on top, it's rated for minus ten. Uh, when you have the, just a thicker layer, it's rated for zero. And when you have just a thinner layer on top, it's rated for plus ten. So I brought the bottom and the thick layer, so it was rated for zero. Plus I figure out my base layer, extra socks, uh, and the bag liner, which is supposed to give an extra seven degrees, uh, I'd be I'd be set. It is a large bag. It takes up a lot of space. It's not light, uh, but again, I'm I'm too claustrophobic for a single sleeping bag. It's just not an option. Uh, I I just can't sleep in them. So uh, you know, either a double wide bag, or when the weather warms up, I'll just take a quilt, lay the quilt over top, and. Uh, and then the double sleep pad as well, so I can move around as much as I want. My boat is the uh, Old Town Camper, 16 foot, uh, made of Royal X, 20 years old. I just drag it across everything. Um, the only damage that that's ever incurred was from the nails sticking up on the boardwalk. Uh, one of them got me pretty good this trip, um, but for the most part, like rocks, they never they never cause any big damage to it. It's a it's a Royal X Expedition canoe. Um, it's it's designed to take that kind of a beat, and so I don't mind putting it through it. And whatever I do to it, I can I can repair it. I do keep a, a two part epoxy in a tube. Uh, so worst case, if I get somewhere and there's a big gouge, you know, pull over, flip it upside down, dry it off, put that epoxy on. Uh, it hardens in 15 minutes. It's cured in 30 minutes. So. You know, you get to camp, you do an inspection, if you want to tidy it up, patch it up, go to bed, next morning, off it races. Um, if you got any questions on any of the gear, uh, what I got, why I got it, why I didn't go with something else, uh, or any recommendations, um, leave it in the comments below. So that's it. Thanks for checking it out.